All right. So the big question, how does it work? Well, you can't hear the music, but it's in my ears. It's in my ears. Anyway, welcome back, everybody. My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. You didn't think I was going to say it, did you? I did. Anyway, in the last video, we made a coupling for the CNC 3D printer CNC mill spindle build. All right, so this is what we did. We made this little coupling on the end of this motor, little brass coupling, set screw in there, and then we machined the inside of this and we made this coupling to fit on the end of here. So, in this video, we're gonna figure out a way to attach these two together, not just by the shaft. All right? Now, what I've devised is this. This is, yes indeed, drawings for my next house. Ha <laughs> ha Not really. These are drawings for the idea that I have on getting this to work. So I thought about this for a while and I couldn't come up with a good solution. The holes are right on top of this piece here. And you can't really thread it from the top very well. If I'd made a piece, I'd have to cut the inside out. So the best solution that I came up with is we make a plate that fits on here that has the holes in the right spot and that can fit over just this coupling. We attach it to here with recessed screws so they're beyond the end of the plate. And I think we can do that. Then we make an adapter that fits on the outside of this that has a flat plate on it that we put holes in both of this outside piece and this outside piece. And then when we put the two together, this is already bolted to a plate and we can just bolt the plate together. We can get in there with screws from the bottom side with no big deal. And, uh, and then I thought along the way, if I made everything fit inside each other with a little lip, everything should be centered perfectly. All these are machined parts, so everything should fit perfectly if I do my job. So that's what this is. Now this drawing also has a cover around the motor. That's one, so you don't get your hand in there or something silly or get a wire caught on there. And two, to, to make the noise just a little bit more quieter. I don't think it'll overheat but overheating is a concern so I may have to drill some holes in that. It might not be anything I need but I want to kind of design it so if I wanted to put a cover on it I could. So let's get started. We're going to start out with some some round stock. We're going to turn our plates and if I feel lucky I'll use my mini lathe today or my excuse me my mini mill. I'm going to use my mini lathe but my mini mill um, I kind of want to use it to make the hole pattern but I don't have a rotational device I just have to use the the, the X or the the Y and the Z on this machine um, which should work but I haven't really used that machine and I don't know how good it is and it's got a DC motor on it and it smells pretty bad so we'll see how that goes all right let's get started okay so I dug through my scrap bin I found a one inch stock piece of aluminum it's a good piece I found uh, some of these blank spacers that look like they were home machined. Good little uh, starting pieces for a flange. I found this really big chunk, which uh, I don't actually want to use, but might have to. So I kind of want to make um, the bottom piece bigger than the motor, because the motor is actually slightly bigger than one inch by a very little bit, actually. So it's like barely, barely over one inch. But it's enough to be a concern. Um, and what I want to do is take a piece of plastic like this and make that cap. But maybe I shouldn't worry so much about the cap. Uh, but it would be easier to take a bigger piece like this maybe instead of this guy. That way I can put a cap over top of the motor and have something that basically fits like a cup over top of here. If I was smart, I'd find me a cap, something the same size as a uh, film canister, maybe, that would fit over top of this, that would I could just machine it to the right size. Hmm, there's an idea. Alright, so let's turn some of this stuff down. Do I look okay to you? 
after a lot of work, I managed to get this little plate done. So this is the top plate. It's a tad bit thinner than I'd like, but I kept kept cutting it off because I had to machine the back side to be flat and I had a, an issue there towards the end. I didn't have a cutoff tool that's long enough. So I kept cutting it back until I got it right. You can see right there, this side has a lip in it. And that lip, come on now, that lip that you see right there fits just perfectly on here. So now we have a bigger flange or a bigger uh, a mounting plate that is also centered. And I, of course I have to drill the holes, but then we can go ahead and make our second half. And then we can run our screws down through there. It shall work. But I think I'm off to bed. See you another day. I decided to stay up anyway. It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. I should be in bed. But I went ahead and got the second ring done. Uh, focus. Alright, there it is. Polished the inside pretty, pretty shiny. And slightly polished the outside of this guy. They're like a... I mean, like, such a perfect match that they're going to have to almost be pressed together. Which I'm actually okay with. I'm actually okay with slightly pressing these together. I might sand this down just a wee bit more, but uh, it's pretty tight. So I'm going to put a hole in here so I can set a set screw. And also I need a hole so that it matches with that hole. And before I actually put it on here, I'm going to have to align everything on the motor plate. So on this plate, I'll drill the holes all the way through, put those set screws, or the screws that go into this plate. And then I think I'm just going to get some really, really tiny screws and make this work. Probably put like five tiny screws around there. I got some really, really, really small stuff from my good buddy Robert K. Hansen. So uh, that's where I got the set screws from too. Some of these tools actually too. So anyway, I will uh, do that next. Uh, I feel like a fat kid in a little coat. This teeny tiny little bitty thing. Thanks to my buddy Robert K. Hansen. He, uh, he's passed and gone away, but uh, I acquired this stuff from him. So God bless you and uh, rest in peace, my friend. It is now 3 o'clock in the morning. I just couldn't stop. This is the first time I got to use this mini mill. And so I used it. And so far it's working amazing. But what I wanted to show you right now, after I clean this off, all right, what I wanted to show you was what I made. I took a piece of PVC pipe and I machined it to fit those two pieces together so that it would be holding it perfectly centered in all directions. And then I just clamped that in my mini mill. And then I went ahead and milled and drilled some holes. So all the holes are slightly different and kind of weird. The ones that hold the motor are correct and they're good. All the other ones are just pre-drilled holes. And then I'm going to find me some really small screws and I'm going to hand finish drilling these. So let's pop this out because I want to look at what that plate looks like. All right. Well, at a glance, it looks like I did a really good job. Those holes are perfectly aligned. And actually, you can't even tell except for like where those wires are till I cross it off. So those holes are exactly where they need to be. Perfect. I am going to ream them out a little bit by hand. I just want to make sure they're in the right spot. And they are. Alrighty then. Took me a bit. I reamed those guys out. Got that plate on there. 
I'm really glad I put that little extra lip on there to make sure everything's centered. That helped me out a lot. I don't know if there's any play in those screw holes, then, uh, you know, we know it's still in the center because of that little lip I put on there. But, um, yeah, so now, on the back side of this plate, what I have to do is actually cut out just a little bit of space so those screws fit tight. I knew that was coming. That's why I left the extra space on this guy. So I'll do that real quick. Okay. It is now 3.46 a.m. And I can say I actually got where I wanted to be. Believe it or not, I thought I could hand dremel this easier than I could on that little mini mill that you see right behind me. Um, so what that means is... I can't tell if it's focused. Anyway, what that means is uh, it's not real purdy, but it never gets seen. It's on the inside. So I'll find my alignment marks. Nope, there they are. Right? Nope, there they are. So there's my alignment marks. You can see my screws are inside of there, and they are recessed in those little pieces. There's a little slop. I wanted that so that I can make sure I get the screw holes right. Okay, I'm officially at a stopping point. I can't go any further. I'm kind of glad because I'm about to pass out. I'm getting pretty weak. Need to drink and eat something. So the next phase and the final phase. Make sure those holes are the right diameter. If not, ream them out a tiny bit. And then put screws in there. Uh, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to bed. That's the first time I ever used that little thing. I really, really like it. I was kind of concerned that if I use a big cutter, that it would just grab my little aluminum piece and shoot it across the room and ruin the whole thing. So instead of cutting it with that, I cut it with this. However, after I got done, I realized if I'd have just used a micro end mill, then I could have just slowly chiseled that out on there. But I just didn't want to take the chance because I've had bad luck. You know, this is only the only clamping pressure you get is right on the outside of this guy. And I was afraid of actually bending this. And if I bent this or got stuck in that, I'm screwed. Alright, now I gotta get the rest of these pieces. Yay! One more thing I could do, and I did. Cut that notch out. Ah! I did use that big end mill. And uh, it actually worked. Uh, I was a little scared, but see, I clamped it sideways, so that's why I was fine with that. Anyway, so now when I put this on here, it will line up with that. Okay, that's it. Ah. Uh, look at that. It's not done, it's just sitting there, but... That looks really good. I am happy with the way this turned out so far. Put a few set screws in this guy though. I did forget to do that. I didn't forget, I just uh... I'm freaking tired, man! Man, that looks good. Almost there! Alright, boys and girls. So there it is. I finished the tapping of the holes as you can see. Those are tiny screws. Those are 0, 80. The holes I drilled for pre-holes was 1.25 millimeters. That's how small those screws are. They're tiny. Um, I went ahead and decided to use those other holes and threaded one one way, one the other way. So I put nails that fit those holes perfectly through there and then I threaded half of them, four of them. Then I screwed those screws in there and took the nails out and then threaded the other half. So I threaded them together and that way when you put it back together the threads match up perfectly and there's no slop, no play and uh, eh, it's just how I did it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together all the way now but I kind of wanted to show you the micro screws that I had. Alright so here it is together. As you can see I forgot to tell you I took a Dremel 
and notched out the backside so I could fit those screws in there because they were too close to the housing. That was kind of my fault, but I only had a certain diameter of stock, so that's what I had. Then you can see the screws on the inside fit in there nicely. Yeah, this thing is perfectly centered, so I went ahead and screwed those through both sides. So originally I was going to use one set of those holes as like an alignment for alignment pins, and then realized if I just thread them all the way through, as long as they're super tight together when I thread them through, by the time I torque them down, nothing's going to move. If anything ever loosens up, I can lightly ream out the one side so it actually pulls towards the other side, but I just don't see the reason for that. I think we'll be good to go. Alright! So the big question, how does it work? Well, it's really not too bad. It's kind of funny, I added uh, two set screws in the hole. Right, one on each side. Sorry, it's blurry, but I added one on each side of the back coupling. On the front coupling, I only added one, even though I've made two holes. And if I add the second set screw, it gets a little off balance. So I don't know if that's pure balancing or not. But now that I think about it, what I could do is drill extra holes in the side of this and add set screws to balance this thing out. But as it is, it's pretty good. So here we go. Adding that extra shim that I added later, after I made that other video, uh, actually made a huge improvement, and I'm very glad I did that. Now the question is, will it Dremel? So let's use it like a pen Dremel and just see what happens. Okay, so I've added this little Dremel end. And I used this earlier on some brass, so I should probably do the same. So, I'll just get out this random piece of brass right here. Maybe I'll get something. Let's do this one. This one's got a key cut in the back for some reason, but it's been broke off. So, it's actually slightly out of balance, uh, the way it sits right now. I think I'm going to put this back here so I don't get too much crap on it. But uh, I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to try cut with it. And maybe I can get you a better shot, actually. And, yeah, hopefully I don't make this humongous giant mess. So, let's go, like, let's go at a very slow speed. Alright, so it's about as slow as I can go. So I almost can't stop it, even at that slowest speed. So let's go a little higher. I guess you need to see it, huh? Okay. Making a mess. You see how messy that was? That's kind of what I want to put a shield over this. And by the way, this does actually feel like it pulls air out of that little crack. So quite fascinating that it does. But you can feel a lot of air movement. This guy stays always pretty cold. The handle actually warms up from the bearings. So look, I put as much force as I could into that, and I, I, I couldn't stop it. So I guess we'll go full force. <laughs> Let's see what kind of RPM we can get out of this. Okay, so to answer your question, freaking A, does it work? I've made a giant mess all over my camera and my stuff, but uh, yeah, I basically drilled a freaking hole right through that guy. So I see absolutely no reason why you couldn't even cut metal with, you know, this actual hand dremel that I made that's actually a spindle. So I'm going to have to play around with uh, balancing this. Now, one idea I had... Uh, where is that thing? I lost it. One idea I had was, here it is, on these CD-ROM drives, uh, they actually have this little balancer, so, if you listen, there's little ball bearings in there, and it self-balances, because when you put a CD 
or a DVD into a 52x CD-ROM drive, that's some freaking RPM. And this actually self-balances it, so it's not so off balance. You got to think about it. So I tried actually putting this on the motor, not on this end, but on this end, and playing around with that idea. And I don't think this is going to work for what I want, but maybe something similar. So if you guys know of some self-balancing thing, I thought about just pushing the shaft out the top and adding it right here onto the top. So I am uh, pleasantly pleased with this. Talk about some torque and RPM. So I think I'll go ahead and cover this up just a little bit and um, and make it maybe so dust can't get in too much or put a little uh, a vent cap on it or something. But I, this is such a big heat sink. I just don't see I don't see that coming off. So I am very happy with this. I hope you guys like this video. And uh, yeah, that's my homemade spindle. That is the end. This is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you want more information on this, check out the website. Links are in the description. See ya! Bye. Welcome back to the closet. You're in the closet. There's the OSD. Where it's home is for the moment. So look, um, get this stable. I wanted to show you sort of the end result without actually showing it you sh without even blah, 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 without showing you it working yet. So this is it. So we have the motor, the spindle, the holder, the vac holder, the vac line, and the controller here. So I suspect this will be mounted something similar to this. So what do I have here? I have a flexible snap together tube thing that I 3D printed. These are individual pieces. And uh, these used to be twice this big, I think, and I printed them smaller. And then I made this a little extension piece in SketchUp and uh, added the cap on the end. And then I just took a Dremel and made the holes after it printed. It printed standing up like this. So this just clips on here. You can see I've got the tool tip on there. I don't know how focused this is. I got bad lighting in here like normal. Anyway, I got the tip on there. Um, that's a 0.1 millimeter that I actually broke off. So it's even smaller than that at the moment. Um, and so it fits like this. And then this end gets hooked up to the vacuum. So the vac system I have. I'm going to try this, although it's really, really loud. This is a shark vacuum, but it has this attachment pre-made that has this small hose on it. And what's important is on the end of this, you can see, maybe you can see, on the end of this right here, there are holes. And by twisting this, you can open or close those holes. It doesn't allow you to close them all the way. And it's like that because otherwise you'll burn the vacuum up. So that's actually important. Don't put a small hose on your vacuum without doing something like that. So this attaches on the end of here really nicely. Just so happens to fit fits this pipe. This pipe is just a piece of flex tubing that's a little more flexible than this this one on the vac. So I just used it. And then yeah, it just sits in there. So let's put it on there temporarily so I can show you what it looks like. Okie dokie. So as a temporary solution, that's it. Now some of you are going to ask me why. You know, I went through the effort to add a vacuum system. It's like because these belts are exposed and that dust is nasty. So with this, you can see how the tip is sitting in there. Once again, poor lighting. But anyway, and then you can move this around if you have a longer drill bit. You know, I can I can uh, make some different flex pieces here. There is plenty of movement here, but I kind of got everything so tight together here that it's that's pretty hard. Anyway. So yeah, there you go. That's that's sort of its home. Now, I'm not going to add any ex uh, internal wiring on the OSD for this project because I don't suspect I'll use it very often. So when I do, I'll just get the vacuum out and I'll run the hose out the top along with just, just this power lead. Um, now, I'll probably already integrate the servo control though. So the servo control will be integrated because I have other plans for ideas for the input for that. So anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you guys think about this. 
build and uh, hopefully you liked it and learned something and if you didn't well maybe you need to go back and watch it again all right peace and love god bless you guys have a good one see ya uh, I forgot to show you one more thing which is kind of important these are the tools that came with the uh, the changer so I designed this of course so you can stick this in the hole right there and now it's locked and so then you can put the you can put the uh, tool on there and then you can take it off I put one hole in the side and one hole in the front but then um, yeah the one on the side works better because it's right between these arms and same thing with this, it's right between these arms. So you can move this full tilt without this hitting. Alright, always forgetting something. Yeah, that's life. I'm a human. See ya. Oh yeah, and so much for cleaning up. I've uh, made almost as big a mess as I had when I started, but I'm glad I cleaned it up. Now I gotta find my stuff again though.